Good morning, everybody, uh, and welcome to the uh, Prosperity UK Alternative Arrangements Commission conference. Uh, this is, uh, my, my name is Paul Marshall. My job is simply to welcome you uh, and then to introduce our, our, our keynote, Steve Barclay. Um, uh, but I do want to say a little bit about the background to this uh, conference. It is the first of a, we're going on the road, and it's a road, first of a road show of uh, five or six conferences uh, around uh, Europe, including uh, Belfast and Dublin and, and the main capitals of the, of the EU. Um, Prosperity UK is a uh, independent, neutral body. It's neutral between Remainers and Leavers. It was set up two and a half years ago in the spirit of bringing together Remainers and Leavers to work constructively on Britain post-Brexit. We thought by now we would be post-Brexit. I didn't expect to be in this situation, but we are where we are. Um, it's also politically neutral, uh, has no, no affiliation, and it's independent of government. <laughs> the context of the Alternative Arrangements Commission really goes back to the Brady Amendment on the 29th of January, uh, which was, as you all know, the only amendment uh, to successfully pass the Commons uh, in this period uh, by 16 votes. And the ess essence of the Brady Amendment is, was that it would uh, accept the withdrawal agreement pro provided the backstop was replaced with alternative arrangements to avoid a hard border. That was a very, very important uh, moment. And I think that most people in the private sector would have said, right, well, we have a way forward. Let's get on with it. Alternative arrangements, solution. That didn't really happen. Uh, and there's been, Steve will tell us more, but there's been not that much that's happened a, 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 in Whitehall yet in, re, in relation to alternative arrangements. And that was a, one of the motivations for us to, to get on with it and to try and see if we could do as much work as possible, which we can feed into the Whitehall process uh, whenever they'd like to and how much they'd like to avail themselves of it. Um, if you look at the response to the um, Alternative Arrangements uh, Amendment, first of all, the Irish. Simon Coveney has said um, that he can accept alternative arrangements, quote, if they do the same job as the backstock, they can replace it. Varadkar has said, we can't accept that alternative arrangements are an alternative to a backstop unless we see what they are, know how they would work, and see them demonstrated. So in other words, turning that around, he's saying we can accept alternative arrangements if we see what they are, know how they work, and see them demonstrated. So actually, we have a green light from the Irish government uh, to, to look at alternative arrangements as the solution to the Irish border problem. In relation to the EU, we've had the Strasbourg instrument uh, in March, which basically was a joint commitment of the UK and the EU to work on alternative arrangements <laughs> Once the, with, once the withdrawal agreement had been signed and passed in the UK. So the crucial error, from, from my judgment, is to delay that work. Uh, but there is a commitment to do that work. So uh, the, the key for us is, well, why not actually start the work now? And so our idea is to proceed as fast as we can with work, uh, bringing together all the experts. We've got a panel of 23 experts. Um, to work on the alternative arrangements in a non-politicized way, to bring together all sides, uh, and to create the basis, the path for, for agreement. Uh, I would emphasize that our work is, this is an interim report that we're releasing today. Uh, it is the beginning of a process of consultation. It is not the definitive report. The whole purpose of this event and the other events we're going to be having across Europe is to gain other people's input until we arrive at what we think is the best uh, combination of ideas to solve uh, the Irish uh, border. And the other really important thing that we're going to do and come up with, which is, will be next month, is what we're calling the Alternative Arrangements Protocol. And this will be a protocol which sets out the conditions which need to be met, and perhaps the practical steps that need to be taken for a protocol to work. Now, for the, for the border, to, for border arrangements to work. The key about that protocol is that it can either happen after the withdrawal agreement or it can be inserted within 
the withdrawal agreement. The importance of the idea of inserting it in the withdrawal agreement is that it really calls everybody's bluff. Because bluntly, if we can agree arrangements for the Irish border that work for everybody, then I think in the UK, many people who have been very resistant about the backstop could be brought to accept it. If we cannot, if the EU will not accept any terms, any arrangements which would work to, to remove the need for a hard, uh, an, a hard border, for a backstop, then, uh, then we as the UK would be probably ill-advised to sign up to the backstop. So focusing in on what alternative arrangements mean and what a protocol would actually mean will be the absolute crux of this work. I'd like to thank uh, very much Greg Hans and Nikki Morden for leading our commission, for the outstanding commitment and hard work they've put into it, for bringing so many parliamentarians on board. I'd like to thank Shankar Singham uh, for the incredible work. He, he's a 24-7 guy. He just works all the time. The, the emails never stop. And I'd like to just thank him for all he's done uh, to bring this all together. And uh, finally, and last and absolutely not least, I would like to introduce our guest speaker, Steve Barclay, who's, who's showing uh, the commitment of the government to support what we're doing. Steve uh, is uh, a brave, indefatigable, some would say indomitable uh, worker for Brexit within government. And uh, Steve, it's great to have you here and to set our conference off. Thank you. Yeah.